Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. He is the two-time uh, Swammy Award winner for Ocean, sorry, Oceania Swimmer of the Year. Uh, as recently as 2020, we just awarded him this, uh, this accolade. He's a world champion. He's a Commonwealth Games champion. He's Pan Pacific Championships medalist. We've got Matt Wilson today. Hey, mate. Thanks for having me on. I want to start with this year. You kind of you kind of exploded onto the scene last year, at least for us, when you, when you broke that uh, tuner, you tied the tuner breast world record, the world championships. That was a crazy yeah. swim. I definitely want to get into that in a little bit, but let's start with this year. Uh, you were just named the, the Oceana Swimmer of the Year in 2020. Um, what has this year been like for you? Yeah, well, first off, that um, award was kind of out of the blue. I didn't really really expect it at all. I thought there was a lot of um, good male swimmers in the Oceania region this year, um, Elijah being one that stood out for me. So, I mean, it was a huge honour to, I mean, go back to back in that award. Um, this year, I, it's just been a crazy year, hasn't it, really? Everything's been thrown up in the air. Um, Olympics being postponed. Um, but for me, I guess it was just a massive training block for me. So that's what I kind of saw it as, is a, is a way to better progress my aerobic capacity. So in that 200 breaststroke, I can come home in a world-class time like an Anton Chukov could do, um, like we saw at World Champs in 2019. So that was kind of what how I used this year. Um, but, I mean, we got put into lockdown for a month or two. So, I mean, that, that period there where I wasn't really doing much swimming was probably the hardest part of this year um, for me. And I had to find different ways to get around that. And um, I kind of tested my resilience a bit. But, I mean, in the long run, it's going to be a big positive um, going into Olympics in 2021 or this year, actually. Yeah, which is crazy to think about. It's already 2020. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of flown by, hasn't it? It, it really has, man. But, you know, that, that's a good thing. I think we're moving forward, moving through the pandemic, certainly. Uh, so first off, you know, you, you were out of the water for a month or two. Um, what, what are you doing? I think I feel like breaststrokers are, are a different breed of swimmer. You know, swimmers are a different breed of athlete. Breaststrokers, different breed of swimmers. Um, so, so what were you doing outside the, outside the water when you couldn't swim? Yeah, I mean, for like the first couple of weeks, I kind of used that as my break, like you would for post Olympics or post any major comp. So you just take that couple of weeks to kind of chill out, um, reset mentally and physically. Um, and then after that, I was quite fortunate that I had access to a pool, which I could do um, some sessions in. So I was doing probably um, like three, maybe four kilometers, just getting some um, feel for the water, uh, maybe three or four times a week as well. Um, just trying to feel the water, not completely lose everything that I had worked on previously. Um, so yeah, I was quite lucky in that aspect. I also I was quite lucky in my garage. I had my own home gym set up. Um, I had a squat rack. I had a cable machine. I had had the lot. I had whoa. <laughs> Um, the Institute of Sport here where I train, um, they, they helped me with a lot of stuff. So I was really like in a lot better position than a lot of people. So I was quite fortunate there. So I could still get a bit of strength in, um, still get a bit of swimming in, but nothing that was going to like destroy me or make me feel flat for the week. It was all just trying to stay in touch while trying to also mentally kind of reset for it was going to be a huge block afterwards yeah and so uh 
so then you get back in the pool well you know kind of back to a normal training in maybe may or june is that right yeah so somewhere around that time okay and it was rough <laughs> it was, <laughs> my god it was and we got eased into it but i i the aerobic freestyle sets we did i was just battling for air after every session and <laughs> I remember getting out one session and I was straight to my coach. I was just like, I do not want to feel like this ever again. Never give me <laughs> such a big break. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't think I'll be experiencing anything quite as drastic as that <laughs> in my lifetime. So there's a big aerobic component. What, uh, yeah. I mean, do you remember some of the stuff you guys were doing during that phase? Uh, it was just a lot of um, like 7k, sessions where we'd do like a lot of um back-to-back 400s back-to-back five 600s um and we all we have heart rate monitors we use the polar flow heart rate monitors Mm. um and we try to stick within a certain heart rate when we do each like 400 500 600 um and as you can imagine when we get straight back in the water our heart rate's going straight through the roof (laughs) So, so we had to um kind of dial it back a bit with the speed and then we got to a point where we had to dial the speed up and kind of forget about the heart rate a little bit. So that I think that period where we like notched the speed up and our heart rate was just through the roof was probably the toughest for me where we were doing some distance freestyle. And yeah, it was just a rough, rough old period. <laughs> <laughs> Are you someone who normally, you know, can, can get through or even enjoy that longer aerobic freestyle training or are you someone who's like i want to do breaststroke no i actually quite enjoy um it's kind of peaceful actually when you're doing like not when it's when you're going like at a pace but when you're just like rolling through trying to stick at like a 130 heart rate 140 heart rate or whatever mm-hmm. quite pe- i get like a song in my head or something or i just like just start thinking about what I'm going to do in the day. And it kind of makes it all go pretty quick, like the session go pretty quick. But it's also, I just find it very relaxing. And I actually don't mind, I don't do a lot of it. I'll probably only do um, like a Monday morning where it's like six or seven K aerobic. But I find it quite peaceful most of the time. Yeah. And so so if that's a Monday morning, uh, what is what is the rest of a typical week kind of look like for you? Yeah, so um, I do nine swim sessions in the week. I go double Monday. So that Monday, Arvo is usually um, kick and pull, where we're just trying to work the individual muscle groups. Um, Tuesday is kind of a like a setup because we will have quality in the Arvo on that Tuesday. Um, so it's like a bit of setup. We do a little bit of um, explode stuff to, to warm up because we'll do some lactate reduction in the afternoon. Mm probably 950s flat stick or uh, probably on five minutes four minutes around so we'll try and get as much lactic acid in the muscles as possible then wednesday uh, wednesday morning sorry is uh, recovery um thursday again we'll do like a setup because we do a bit more of a a 200 200 sorry kind of set mm. um and then like the other on the thursday will be a mix between doing 50s on like a minute at 200 pace and then we mix it in with some aerobic freestyle so we go kind of from like the breaststroke straight into the freestyle straight back into the breaststroke straight into freestyle we do that multiple times um, it just kind of works the aerobic system a bit more get a bit more um distance in as well because you can't do as much distance going breaststroke as you can do a freestyle which is mm-hmm. obvious but um for us, we've done a lot of research and a lot of um, work into perfecting that session. Um, then a Friday, again, is recovery after that. And then Saturday, we're going to... Saturday varies, really. It's quality, but it can be sprint or distance or middle distance, but just kind of depends on what block we're in. Gotcha. So you, so you've really got it down. It's. I mean, it sounds like that's... <laughs> Um, I mean, you know what you're doing, you know what to expect. And I mean, you said you did, you've, you've done a bit of research 
and you've kind of perfected this system. I mean, tell me about the genesis of that and, uh, and, and what that's entailed to kind of tailor this system to what works for you. Yeah, I, we've always, because when I first joined, I've been in this squad since I was 14, I think. So okay. I've been here um, for nearly eight years, coming up on eight years. Makes me feel a bit old. But um, <laughs> when I first joined, I was doing a lot of distance, like 800 sets with Jess Ashwood. Um, mm. So when I originally came, I came as an IMR who could do breaststroke and who could also do multiple freestyle events. And when I first joined, they originally just kind of put me with Jess as a training partner to um, get my base up. Okay. And we found that that really worked for all my events. And we like tinkered with um, doing like distance freestyle stuff throughout my career, which then kind of helped with my back end of my 200 breaststroke. So putting the two together seemed like the logical move. And I've been doing that for like the last three years since really I made the team. So, I mean, it's been working and um, I don't think it's probably, probably not going to change anytime soon. So. Yeah. And so, I mean, what has worked or what, what do you feel like has clicked about being on this team for you for so long? Is it just that you've, you've been able to develop a system that has worked for you? And so now, you know, th that hasn't stopped working? Yeah, well, I mean, we've got a huge support group here, um, biomech, sports scientists, multiple coaches. Um, I think a big thing for me when I was coming from age group to senior team to uh, making world chance finals was my technique because as you get to 18, 19, you're starting to hit a lot. Like you're going to start to get a lot stronger and technique sometimes for those people goes out the window and that's where they kind of fall apart. Whereas I had a big support. My biomech was very much like nailing technique and mm -hmm. intimate. Um, making sure that I'm always thinking about it. And I think that's one of my strengths is like the, the little things I do, like the, um, I'm just working on my head position, working on turns, working on starts. We do a lot of work on that stuff. And I've been doing that for the last few years, which is kind of where my big improvements have come. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, that's one part of my swimming where I um, excel is doing the small things, uh, and like just the, just the technical side of stuff. Yeah. So, so very technique focused, which, and you know, if you have a lot of resources that can be really cool, really fun to, to just kind of get into that nitty gritty yeah. stuff. Um, so that's, that's really interesting. Do you have a favorite thing that to work on or a biggest thing you've been trying to work on lately? Yeah. Um, the, la the latest thing I've been trying to do is um, just fix up, my turn times a little bit. So we do, we get times of five in, 10 out mm. uh, that equates to, so for me, usually that's around just a bit under nine seconds or around that, uh, between eight and nine seconds. Okay. And when I raced at the state champs in mid December, I went 208A, I think it was. And we got a race analysis on that. And my swim speed was exactly the same as when I equaled the world record, but my turn times were a whole two seconds slower than what I did at world champs. And we were kind of like, like what's going on? Like where did it go wrong or where, did, where can I improve? So that's kind of where we're at at the moment, trying to get back to where I was with my turns, which I haven't done a lot of turn work or skill work in my starts and my underwaters because we were focusing so much on, just building an aerobic base. Mm. Swim speed was there, but there's still a lot of work to do on my skills and stuff. So that's where we're kind of focusing at the moment. Okay. So let me get this straight. Uh, it's five in, 10 out. Yep. So, so five meters into the wall and then 10 yep, meters. So from the flags the in. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then 10 meters out. And then 10 meters. So that 15 meters, you, you, you're saying, 
that your there's three turns, right? So that yep. the, the three turns combined in your two inner breast when you went to 088 was two seconds slower than those three turns in, yeah. in your world champ swim. Yeah. So if I had turned exactly, I would have equaled my world record if I turned exactly the same as I did at world champs because my swim speed was, I think it was 0 0.01 slower than what I swam at world champs. <laughs> That's, I mean, like that. I've never heard of using that metric before, but that's, I mean, it makes total sense. Um, yeah. Which is, which is super cool. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of dumbfounded right now that I've, <laughs> that, like, we don't talk about that more here in the U S maybe that maybe it's an Australian thing. I don't know. Maybe this is the secret to why you guys swim f so fast lately. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like a lot of people in Australia do it. Um, okay. I've done it for as long as I can remember. Um, literally since the squad, I've been getting um, times for like five meters in, 10 meters out. Um, and that's kind of like an indicator of, it indicates how like fresh I am as well, I think. Hmm. Um, Cause I remember doing some turn times at, uh, we're in Cairns on a staging camp before we went to world champs and I did a turn and it was a seven, eight, which is a lot faster than what I use. It's probably half a second faster than what I do in a race. And I was just like, like I'm on, like I'm ready to race. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And, and okay. So that's, that's really interesting. So let's, yeah, let's, let's talk about these meets. Um, you have this, the, so the state championships was the, the long course meet. Is that right? Yeah, that was a long course meet, and that was in uh, at Olympic Park where I train. Okay, um, so I mean, take me through that meet. You go two hundred eight eight and the two hundred. Um, you know, how do you feel about your performances there? And did you did you rest at all going into that meet? Yeah, um, there wasn't a lot of rest. It was a little bit like you know, you get that half week before you go in. Um, the sessions coming down to like five k, four k, then it's down to a bit of pre race. Mm. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a mixed bag at um, the state champs there. Uh, just, I mean, I hadn't raced long course really since the start of the year. It was kind of just about adjusting to racing again, really trying to get the race plans right. And I mean, two hundred breaststroke is such a race plan driven event that I just like you need to do it a few times to nail it. Um, which I found I did in 2019. I'd done it so many times before. When I got to World Champs, I just knew I was going to, like what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. And I knew that it would work. Whereas here, I haven't done anything for uh, six, seven, eight months or nothing fresh since World Champs really. So yeah, it was kind of just about finding out where I was with my race plan, where I can fix it. Um, and we've, we found a lot of stuff that I can improve on and we found some stuff that I did well. Yeah. So yeah, the, that's where the mixed bag is. My hundred was not bad either. Um, just a bit on the skill side as well. It was just uh, a little bit off, but the, again, that's something that we were just trying to um, work out a race plan for that as well and look on stuff that we can improve and stuff I did well. Yeah. And then in backing, backing it up just a little more, um, y'all had, you know, virtual short course championships in November where, uh, you broke the Oceana, uh, record in the hundred breast. Um, how yeah. do you, how do you, what do you think about short course? <laughs> do you like short? Oh, course? It's, oh I, I think it's pretty fun. Um, not so much for a 200. <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was one of the most painful races of my life. The, it was the first race since May or whenever it was, March maybe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all the turns got to me in the end and I just, I completely messed up my race plan. But my 100 was actually pretty well swum race plan wise. It was just, I was lacking a little bit of speed from, I mean, not being fresh and not, um, not having that race practice behind me before then hmm. so i mean 56.8 wasn't 
wasn't really the time I was gunning for, but the way I swam it was I was happy with. Uh, and I think if we had kind of like the ISL did where they had six, seven, eight matches and every time they swam, they got better. I feel like a lot of people at that meet would have been like that. We would have kept swimming. We kept doing the race practice. Um, we would have got better throughout. But I was, overall, I was happy with my 100 and I was a bit crappy over my two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it sounds like you got some, some good racing in and also some valuable data moving forward. So, you know, you mentioned it was a bit of a, you know, half week taper for the queen or for the, sorry, for the state championships. Um, and you mentioned this, this huge training block. Uh, to, I mean, obviously leading into these 2021 Olympics, tell me about where you're at in training right now. Yeah. So we just have like a, a kind of like a week off over Christmas where we just like, we, we went back to a, a lot of us um, are out of home and we all come to Olympic Park. So we got a few people who like live a couple of hours out of Sydney. So we all um, kind of went back and we had Christmas with our families. And um, over that period, we did like a couple of sessions where we just, just swam by ourselves. We did a little bit of gym by ourselves. Um, nothing strenuous at all. It was all just like, just getting a feel for the water. So I only got back in, uh, I got back in on the 2nd of January. So I've been in for about, probably not even a week. I've been in a bit over a week. So kind of just um, regaining a bit of aerobic fitness at the moment. We're doing a big block of uh, where we'll do six, between five and seven K sets probably for this next one. I'm um, just kind of building up our aerobic capacity and we'll go away we're going to go away for a couple of weeks, um, just a bit of a change of scenery, get out of Sydney. Um, and then after that, we'll go into, we're going to do altitude tents. Um, so we put the, the sheet over the bed. Um, and yeah, it's a kind of like an altitude simulation. Okay. You got this big machine and it pumps, it's very confusing, it pumps uh, something into the tent, which changes the oxygen content in the tent. So you sleep at a higher altitude than you would if you didn't have the tent on. So we'll okay. do that for weeks and that will, um, hopefully that will help with our capacity. Very interesting. Okay. Um, so before I, I, I want to get into kind of this big training block and what, you know, you, you, how, how you mentioned you're hoping to get that aerobic capacity up to come home in the tuner breast. So before we get to that, I want to take it back a little bit. <clears throat> you know, you came onto the scene at those 2019 world championships in, in a very big way. Um, you said heading into that meet, you know, you were on your, your turn time was about a half second better than it, what it normally is. Tell me about heading into that meet, um, how you were feeling and what kind of your expectations were from yourself. Yeah, I mean, my expectations heading into that was that I could um, get close to that world record. I mean, I in April that year I had swum a two hundred seven one. I kind of I dropped. I think I think it was over a second off my PB. I think I was a two hundred eight two before that, and I kind of just dropped out. I didn't even expect to break two hundred eight when I was racing in April. Mm. So then going into uh, world champs, I was expecting pretty big things. I thought like I was on, I was swimming the best swimming of my life. Um, I, it, every time I did a quality set, my breaststroke fell on. I was pushing, if we're doing say, I did 850s on a minute um, at 200 pace. So I was pushing between 29.5 and 30.5 every single time. Um, and I would do that a few times over as well. So we, we did one big set I did was three lots of 850s on a minute. And each one was, they're all under 30.5. And I think a lot of them were 29s. Mm -hmm. uh, when I did that, I kind of knew like I was on, like I'm going to swim pretty well here if I can put it together 
Um, and then the whole leading it, we went to Nagaoka. Um, I think it was a week before we went into Tokyo. Sorry, not Tokyo, into South Korea. Um, and there as well, I was doing some really fast sets and I was, it just built my confidence. I built my confidence up so much that I was like, yeah, like I'm, this is going to happen. I'm going to do it. I think I even said <laughs> we had like a press conference. I was with Bronte Campbell in a press conference in Japan and they asked what were our expectations. And Bronte said, I want to go and swim my best and I want to have fun swimming. And I was like, oh, I want to, I want to get that world record. <laughs> <laughs> I just came out and said it. I was like, probably, probably shouldn't have been so bold and said it like that, but it's what I wanted to do. And well, in the end, I equaled it. So it was a goal I kind of got as well. Yeah. And so, I mean, take me through, you, you'd been to the 2017 world championships. You'd swum, I think you, you swim the 50 and the 200. Is that right? Yeah. They wouldn't let me swim that. Uh, some been, uh, qualifying time stuff because i swam a pretty average hundred at the trials okay and it was over the a time so they wouldn't let me swim it at world champs or something but yeah i swam the 50 and the 200 there and that was my first um national team okay so you you had swam at world championships before had you ever did you make semis or finals in in 17 yeah i made the final of the 200 at 2017 i kind of scraped i scraped in there in seventh I think it was, and I came dead last in the final. I went two ten, <laughs> fucking swim. But I was pretty pumped to make the final. I think I made the final with the two hundred eight six. I think it was. Okay. So I, was, I was stoked that I, I was just stoked that I was there in the first place because the year before that, I had probably one of the the worst years of my life, um, missing Olympics by point oh three in the hundred and point oh. Sorry, 0.27, I think it was in the 200. And then at Shore Course trials for like Shore Course Worlds, I missed the 200 breaststroke by 0.07, I think it was. So it's just like, just like so, so much bad luck and just, just getting out touched. Um, but in the end, it kind of ignited a flame that wouldn't have been as big if it didn't happen. So when I made that 2017 team, I was so pumped. I was just kind of just happy to be there and like just happy to be swimming with like all these guys I've looked up to for for years when I was younger, when I was an age grouper. Um, and I think it was kind of in 2018 where my mentality switched to like, I'm going to be on that podium and trying to win medals and trying to get all these records and whatever. Yeah. And so, and so then flash to 2019, you've kind of made this ascension, you know, you go to your first world champs, you make an A final, you go to the Pan Pacific championships, win a bronze medal. And then, uh, you know, you, you, you get to the 200 breast in, uh, in Guangzhou 2019 world championships. Um, tell me about, take me through prelims, semis, finals. Yeah. So prelim, it was very, chill for me because I knew like I knew I was on mm-hmm. so I didn't have to expend too much energy in the prelim um so my first my first lap I think I was maybe 10 strokes on the first 50 which <laughs> more or less than what I'd usually be and then I just it felt so good like I was just gliding through the water I felt so good in the water and I finished that prelim I think I went 207.2 or 207.3 and I was like crap, like, (laughs) I'm going to go fast tonight. Like, that was so easy. And all that day, I was was quite relaxed because I knew that I had that speed and I had that confidence behind me and then I didn't have to worry too much about um, trying to swim too fast to make a final. So really the plan going into the semifinal was originally I was just going to swim the first 150 and see where I was and then just cruise into the wall mm. um in that race so i kind of i heard the crowd and i thought i turned and i saw ipe out lane two was it was pretty close to me and marco was just behind me as well in lane five mm-hmm. they were 
relatively closed at the time. So when I heard the crowd, I thought one of those two might have been catching up to me. And I'm like, oh, we can't have that. So, <laughs> so I kind of put the foot down. And I think if you watch the video, you can see in the last three strokes, I kind of like just go really high and trying to just get to the wall first. And turns out they, I think they were probably a bit of over a second behind me. I turned around and I saw that it equaled the world record. I was like, like holy crap. Like, <laughs> did, like, did I just do that? Like, I would not have thought I would be able to do that in a million years. So that was just, it was a really special moment turning around and seeing that. And yeah, I don't think I slept too much that night, quite honestly. It was, <laughs> it's just like, so I'm such a high. I was pretty lucky I didn't have to um, race the next morning. I could just have a good sleep in and then uh, go for a swim at the pool in the morning. But, yeah, I mean, it's just such a surreal feeling, semi-final. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I think you hear a lot about, you know, having getting getting that high, not being able to sleep a lot, especially at a, at a big meet like an Olympics, a world championships. Um, and so – like you said, it's, it's a good thing. You, you didn't have to swim in the morning. You're able to sleep in a little bit. Um, heading into that final, you'd been in the A final before, but obviously you were, you were top seed. This was, this, this was the fastest heat of 200 breast in history. You know, you, you, in, in hindsight, you have three guys that go 206. Uh, yeah. You go 1.01 slower. So you're, you're right on. The time you went in semis obviously like we mentioned anton has had that uh that crazy back half but i mean take me through that race and especially leading up to that race you know what, what's your mentality like now that you've had this now that you've tied the world record yeah well, i always knew going into that race that anton was gonna back end the crap out of that race <laughs> i've seen i've been racing him since i was probably 15 or so, <laughs> maybe 16. So I know how he races it. He goes out in a 102, he comes back in a 103 high. So <laughs> yeah. I knew that was coming. Um, but I think the main focus that me and my coach were talking about was that we're going to race my way. We're going to race my race plan. We're going to focus on Anton in lane five or Ipe in lane one or whatever. Mm. So the big focus there was just executing my race plan, which is what I did on the day. I was really happy with how I swam, even though I was 101 over what I did in the semi. Um, it's still, it was the second fastest I've ever swam. It was still the second time I went under 206 in the last couple of days. And I, I didn't let the pressure get to me, which was the big thing. I, there was a lot of pressure going into the race that I was the um, I was the current world record holder, and a lot of people were saying that I was the favourite to to win that race. Or in my head, I still thought I was the underdog because Ant, or Anton was there, and I knew that he was going to drop a faster time than a two hundred six six. So going into that race, I thought I'm the underdog. Um, there's no pressure on me. I just got to swim my swim, and in the end, I was really happy with the two hundred six six and the way I swam it. Yeah. I mean, in looking back at that heat, you have EPA who is just, you know, he was the Pan Pacific champion. He's mm -hmm. been a breaststroke stalwart for, for the last quad. You yeah. have Anton. There was a lot of well credentialed swimmers in that race. I think right. Marco was there as well. Yeah. Um, I think Ballandin was there as well in the, in the <laughs> team. Yeah. The Olympic champion, world champion for 2015, world champion for 2017. <laughs> You just got the lot in there. And it was, a, like you said, it was the fastest race, I think, that like, fastest 200 breaststroke ever. And it was just a crazy swim from pretty much everyone in that race, really. Yeah. I mean, every it, it seems like everyone, or at least those the medalists certainly, were able to put all put together crazy swims um, or, or really stick to their race plans. Um which, which was, you know, as the viewer was just like, what is happening? This is nuts. Yeah. Um, I've ra I watched that race back a few times and I'm just like, I still get chills over it. Cause it's just, 
such a choppy change you race like one person's in front of one minute then the next person and like someone's all the way back there coming in and winning and I mean, it's just exciting like as a swimmer it's exciting as well like watching it back um I can't imagine what it's like being a spectator watching it live that'd be pretty cool I think uh yeah I, I mean I was I, I was not there but we were watching it on TV live and it was, it was, it was fun. Yeah. You guys, you guys I could imagine. I would, some, sometimes I would love to just like be that, but just sitting up and watching my swim, that would be, or watching myself in that race. That would be something that I would love, obviously not possible, but <laughs> something I would love. <laughs> You know, te- who knows where technology is going to take us in 20 <laughs> years, but yeah, maybe. Um, but so, 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 you know, having gone through that race, having gone through this year, we, we talked about, you talked about the huge aerobic block. You're trying to come home like a freight train, you know? I mean, the question is, what are you going to do to get that world record back? Oh, I'm going to have to come home a lot faster than that last 50. That's for sure. Um, I mean, I'm probably not going to change my race plan that much to, to suit Anton or to suit Zach or whoever. Um, I've still got that mentality where I like to go out fast. I like to go out. I like to lead from the start. It's kind of like a um, come catch me if you can. Hmm. Um, and I mean, doing a lot of back-to-back 50s in training with that aerobic freestyle, I think it's going to help me a lot, which is kind of what my coach and I have been talking about doing. Uh, so we're going to start implementing that. We haven't done a lot of that in the past where we go um, like a bit of short rest, breaststroke, where we go like on five, 10 seconds rest and we have to go 30 point or 29 point again. Mm. Um, we haven't done a lot of that in the past. So we're going to try and implement that into my next training block. Um, and hopefully we see some results from that because I'll get a few, a bit, a bit of racing in before Olympic trials. I get, I think, two races in Sydney. Um, we've got national champs on the Gold Coast in April as well. So I'll, I'll have a lot of opportunity to see where my breaststroke at, is at and where my back end is at. Um, and then we can always make adjustments um, on the run as well. Nice. That's, that, that sounds like a good plan heading in. So you guys have nationals <laughs> and then you have trials. Yeah. So we kind of copied you guys with our, um, with our trials hmm. five weeks out. Um, that, kind, that changed in 2018, I think. Um, that was the first time we did that. Okay. And it worked really well for, for myself and for a lot of the people on the team. But prior to that, we used to have national champs in April, which was also our trials. Hmm. Um, and then we'd kind of be waiting for like this next big meet, which is two, three months away or whatever. Yeah. I think this new way that we do it is for me, for me personally is a lot better, but yeah, we got um, our national champs in April on the Gold Coast, which would just be, I don't think everyone will be rested for that, but um, there'll be kind of like, just like a hit out to see where we're at. I think more so than anything. Yeah. Um, nice. And so that's a, the, have you, if you, since you guys have switched to that format of trials meet, I don't know, four to eight weeks, something like that. And then yeah. the big meet, um, how you, you said it's worked out for you. How do you manage that kind of double taper? Yeah. So we, um, I mean, pretty much we have like a day off after racing and then we go straight into training again like we would train normally, like we haven't stopped training, like we haven't raced that last week. It's kind of like it, it didn't happen. We go back into training and um, we kind of get the meters up at the start, like the first week or two. It's just bumping out the meters and like we do like five kilometer sessions or around that. And the quality sessions are still the same. They're a lot um, race specific stuff. Mm. After the two weeks, we start to kind of gradually decrease the distance again, um, get a bit of freshness into our body. Um, but we still, I still do a lot of speed stuff in that period, in that second two weeks. Um, so I'll do, 
I kind of do some like broken hundred efforts um, where I do like a 50 dive and then I'll do like 20 seconds rest and I'll push a, push a second 50. Um, okay. So I'll still do a lot of that in that second week block where the distance is coming down, but the, the quality is still staying as quality, I guess you could say. Yeah. That, I mean, that makes sense. And that seems, yeah. I'm guessing we do a similar thing for, you know, athletes who make a world's team or an Olympic team. I'm guessing it's something like that. Um, but that's, that's pretty cool. So, so heading forward, you've got some competitions, um, which is good. <laughs> like it's, I feel like everything's still pretty shaky right now in terms of the certainty of events, but yeah, like- every, everything is still up in the air, but the way that I kind of see it is just, you just got to train as if it's happening mm. and be the best prepared you can. I mean, if it goes ahead or if it doesn't go ahead, then I mean, yeah, at least you know you're prepared for it. Yeah. So, I mean, Matt, I, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk with me a bit. It's, it's, no been, worries. it's been great <laughs> talking, <laughs> chatting with you. Um, any parting thoughts before we sign off? Uh, not, not really. <laughs> no, I'm not a big philosophy guy or whatever, but I just like to say thank you for having me on. Um, this has been great. Really enjoyed it. It's been very uh, good to talk swimming. Don't get to talk too much swimming, <laughs> really. Good. Yeah, I think I think these podcasts have saved me just because I get to talk swimming <laughs> on them. Yeah, it's good. I've seen a few. I saw the. I think you did one with Maggie the other day, and he was talking about um, his league background. <laughs> I've seen that close coordination. That guy could not catch up footy to save his life. <laughs> Oh, that's great. A big guy, though. I wouldn't want to run straight at him. <laughs> Dude, no kidding. Yeah, he's. <laughs> I, we, we saw him in person once when he was in the States after Rio. And it's just like, hey, man. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, oh. <laughs> but <laughs> um well i yeah i it's it's fun talking to him and, and I, I appreciate you coming on and taking the time no worries thanks for having me you've been listening to the swim swam podcast stay tuned for new episodes every week you can take swim swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel for more videos as well